Hey everyone, this is Pam Coey and boy, I thought I would have finished this by now, but you know, um, I've been pretty busy doing a lot of different things and I uh, hope you're doing well and thanks for uh, watching this video and letting me know that you're kind of waiting for this uh, part five and you're probably really waiting for me to finish it. So, <laughs> so am I. I want you to know that I am hoping to finish this soon. Uh, so I thought while I'm, you know, playing this video back for you and just giving you some comments on what I'm doing, which, you know, you can see I'm painting again. This painting has gone through a lot of different changes starting with the house paint, under painting, and in a very free form, uh, which I call kind of the play stage, and then moving into some collage material. And then in, in one of the videos, I showed you how I use that tape, that green, ugly tape that's hanging by the sides of this painting to basically put a pattern over the chaotic beginning. I like to balance uh, pattern and structure over chaos and kind of go back and forth with that. When I took the tape off, I had stripes, and then I went back into collage, and now um, you can see that I'm, I'm working back into the painting with this acrylic paint. So here I am just painting back into the painting here. Uh, this is a diptych, it's acrylic, and it's four feet by six feet. I have a feeling this one's gonna stay a diptych. You know, sometimes I don't always know that, but in this case, because I'm developing the whole painting as one, it feels like one to me. I don't really see a point in, at least for now, separating these panels. And so I thought while I'm showing you my process here, and it is again time lapse, so it's going, you know, even though it looks like sometimes I'm, I'm slowing down like right here, I'm actually, uh, I've sped this video up about 300%. And it's called a time lapse video. So I wanted to also answer a few questions that I, I again, I, I appreciate your comments and, you know, when you like the video and subscribe to my channel, that's all really wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, you're, you're an awesome audience. And, you know, I just, really love to share what I'm doing with you. Uh, so a while ago I put a form in my description box for you know submitting questions and I must admit I haven't had a chance to really get to the questions and answer them when I thought I would pull out some of these questions that you've been submitting and, and answer the ones that kind of relate to what I'm doing right here. So I get these questions they're submitted by people you know from from everywhere uh, and some of the questions pertain to other mediums I've been working in, but I've chosen some questions that people have submitted that pertain to working with collage and working in acrylic and uh, perhaps just working abstractly and I thought I would just answer them as it's really fun to kind of go back and forth. I mean, I'm, I'm mostly interested in answering questions that you all have and every question you've had I've had the question as well, and if I have an answer or a response, I'd like to, to share that with you. Um, so again, what I'm doing right here in this painting is I'm <laughs> going back to the painting stage after all the collage has been put on, the stripes um, are now in place, and by painting onto this painting right now, I'm obliterating portions of the stripes because they were pretty strong, too strong for me. I want some of them to remain but I don't want as many as I had there, and I knew I was gonna be doing that. So even though I went over the entire painting with stripes, I knew that I wouldn't be keeping them all. So let's look at one of the questions I got from uh, Sue Knudsen recently from Alexandria, Virginia, and she wrote, uh, I love incorporating collage in my acrylic paintings, but when using tissue paper, more durable artist tissue paper, I have such a problem with the paper wrinkling. I make an effort to thoroughly coat the underside and over the top and still have problems. Do you encounter similar problems that I just can't see in the video? I actually do have similar problems, Sue, and uh, you know, I, um, I think sometimes it's okay. Like I don't always mind if the collage paper is sort of somewhat wrinkled. 
and the thinner the paper the more wrinkling you're going to get and then the more you try to smooth it out you know if, if it's tissue paper sometimes it tears so my attitude about that is well hey you know kind of whatever happens happens number one because usually when i'm working with collage paper it's to add some sense of texture a different element you know so it might have some some interesting color or pattern or whatever is on there it could have text now so when it when it does wrinkle like that what i'll try to do is um, get out a brayer and then put a piece of either wax paper or the shiny side of freezer paper or parchment paper one of those three usually over the collage paper and then i'll just kind of brayer the wrinkles out i mean it, it's never perfect but it certainly does get rid of some of them and then, you know, I, I take the paper off so I can see, uh, assess how that looks. And usually it's gotten better. So the wrinkles, a lot of them are gonna go out. Those wrinkles are really just air bubbles that are trapped in there. And, you know, sometimes I'll smooth it out with my hand. Uh, but because a lot of times, and, and in this video, you're actually gonna see how I use um, some sandpaper on a sand block, sanding block. So if the paper's wrinkled, I actually like what happens when I sand over it after it's dried. So in answer to your question, yes, I do have wrinkling, but I don't worry too much about it. But those are my three solutions. Um, basically one of those papers with a brayer. I hope that helps you. And uh, another question from, let's see here, Wendy Ketchum in Tamworth, New Hampshire. Thanks for the question. And by the way, thanks for the question, Sue. I appreciate that. And, and Wendy, um, she's in New Hampshire, and she wrote, how do you finish the edges of your cradled panels? Do you paint them a color or sand and stain them or simply varnish the raw wood? Any other applications? So that is a really great question, and I have finished the edges of a cradled panel in a couple different ways. Now, obviously, this is a cradled wooden panel, so we're talking about this type of panel, that's what the question pertains to, because obviously I'm not using a frame. And so, yes, I usually try to tape my edges to protect them so that when I pull the tape off at the very end of a painting, you know, the, the edges are nice, they're clean, they're wood. You know, sometimes I'll just sand them because I wanna keep that raw wood finish. And then, yeah, put on some plain, clear PVA, uh, polyvinyl, urethane, uh, varnish on there and a couple coats of that and call it done. Other times, you know, I might paint in acrylic. Usually I always finish the edges. If I'm going to paint them, it's acrylic. And I'll put on one coat and then let it dry, sand it lightly, put a second coat on, and then let that dry. And then the final thing I do is I put a thin coating of cold wax medium over that paint, let that dry, and then I buff it because it gives kind of a satin finish. And I, I do really like that treatment as well. So those are my two favorites is number one, just letting the raw wood show. So I'll sand it just a little bit if there's any paint that happened to get on there. You know, sand it first and then put on the, I think it's called polyurethane, yeah. And uh, just let that dry. And, and then, um, you know, I can also put some cold wax medium over that as well. So basically, yeah, that's all I do. Uh, sometimes the color's nice. Uh, if, if I use color, I'll, I'll pull out a color from the painting itself, something that is kind of neutral. I don't, I don't use like, you know, really bright or like really dark colors. Usually it's something very neutral. And uh, so thank you for that question. So as you can see here on the painting, uh, again, I'm, when I put paint on, when it's acrylic especially, I mean, you know, you have a certain window of time to work with it. And so right there you saw me putting the paint on and then I took a paper towel to remove some of that. Again, that's me trying to work on that balance between opacity and transparency. Now I did take some of that white paint off with the paper towel. When I move on into this painting, you'll see how I can further remove it even after it's dry, simply by sanding. So sanding is a form of glazing because what happens is it kind of takes off, you know, some of the paints you can see underneath it. And it's just this, again, overall treatment to the entire surface. Whenever that happens, you tend to make things more harmonized. So sanding is, is basically a form of glazing. 
it's kind of odd to think of it that way, but you know, some of the paint comes off, some of the collage paper comes off and reveals what's underneath it. And what's underneath it, you know, when you reveal what's underneath all these added layers, you're kind of coming down to this one layer that was all over, that all over pattern. So you're kind of reaching into that all over pattern, which then harmonizes and unifies the entire painting. So as I go forth in this painting, what I'm trying to do is, you know, I've kind of located these key areas that I, I am drawn to. It doesn't mean that I'm really going to be painting around them necessarily, but I'm kind of aware um, of where they are. So location and then their relative size. And then I'm trying to think, you know, I, I'm aware that I don't want to cover them or obliterate them. I'm happy to obliterate things near them in values that are different from what those key areas I'd like are so that they stand out. And I'm also aware that the stripey pattern, I like it and I want to keep some of it, but I need to keep only enough of it to make this painting work for me. So that's why, you know, it's fun because I, I just love all these layers that allow me to make choices and further my personal voice and, and kind of find my personal voice as I go. And now I'm reaching for this very long, it's like a six foot, not quite six feet I don't think, but it's just a very long yardstick I got at the hardware store. And, putting back some marks and I it took me a long time to find my awl and awl is like a really sharp pointy tool for digging into a, a wooden surface and cutting through all the paint and the collage material um, I eventually found it but you know other times I've used a nail really sharp nail really long nail and I just kind of again it's very random when I do it but the reason I'm doing it is uh, well there is a reason and that is yeah, it's adding marks for sure, but you know, when the awl is actually gouging the surface and now there's a pencil, that's that's a real topical mark, but when I go back into this whole thing with the glaze, what's going to happen is it's going to go into those things, like every place that I took the nail or the awl, which is kind of a, a cut into the surface, well when you glaze, the glaze will go into those cracks and, and fill it fill it in and then you know when I wipe off most of the glaze it's going to still leave uh, some evidence that it was there so now I'm sanding and I you can see I'm using a hand sander and I should have had a mask on I'm usually really good about that but sometimes I just I'm so in the moment that I kind of you know say well I'm not gonna go get my mask because I want to just do this I'm usually so excited to start the sanding it's really fun and if you've never tried the sanding process I encourage you to try it it's just uh, it's just fun and some people will use an orbital sander but uh, that's heavy duty you would never want to do that on just say a sheet of paper but if you're doing it on panel you're fine but just be aware that if you use an orbital sander it's uh, very powerful and you know obviously the harder you press on it the more paint you're gonna take off so you know this acrylic is on there it's it's tough stuff so to get through it I have to you know put a lot of like elbow grease into it and I was just thinking how many calories I'm burning by doing this and that's cool <laughs> who doesn't want to burn calories while they're painting but anyways um what I'm keeping an eye on is well first of all I'm I'm kind of moving it the sand block all around the painting you know right panel left panel top bottom sides whatever um, trying to just make sure that I sand the entire painting somewhere and uh, it different degrees of pressure it, it's not that it all has to be the same but but you can see and, and you'll see close-ups later toward the end of this video where uh, some of that under painting is showing through especially where the paint was rather thin and of course I'm degrading some of that collage paper some of it's going to tear away um, but when you think about, I don't know, like most people that I know, um, at least from the photos that I've seen of you know, things that inspire them, 
books. They want to travel to workshops. A lot of times they'll tell me, you know, they like this feeling of history. They like old walls. They like graffiti walls. They like, you know, things that just look aged and worn. And when you think about, well, what causes that? And if you're walking in a big city and you happen to be walking um, past buildings and you see these old worn walls, or where, say, the, the weather or the sun has beaten it down and the paint is peeling, I mean, that's essentially what I'm trying to replicate here by sanding is like, I'm imposing my own uh, degradation on a surface because I like that effect and I'm not going to let time pass and let rain and sand and wind and all those things uh, distress my painting. I'm going to distress it myself and I do it with sandpaper. Sometimes you can actually do this with uh, steel wool. I mean, really any, anything that's kind of gritty will work and the sanding block has kind of a medium grade sandpaper probably about a hundred or maybe a 200 grade so it's not terribly toothy you can use you know a much higher degree of sandpaper or lower sometimes there's a, a right time for everything or you know right time for really coarse paper and a right time for not so coarse paper but um, anyways yeah so that's kind of what I'm doing here I'm just gauging what's happening and then you know after you sand the surface which again is like glazing um, your lights are going to get a little darker simply because you've taken away some of that brightness and revealed some of the little bits of color that pop through and you're going to have to restate some of those lighter areas in the same way the darks often become lighter and so then you might have to make those darker it's just something that happens when you glaze. Now, again, you can glaze with, with paint, which I will be doing later in this painting. I, I know I'll be doing that. Um, or you can sand. So those are both considered to be kind of ways to harmonize and ways to glaze. Just redefining shapes and things like that. This is a question from Maureen Howard from Tappan, British Columbia in Canada. And she says, I've seen you put your canvases on the walls and they just stay put so nicely. What's your secret? <laughs> um, well, yeah, as much as I wish this was canvas because it would be so much lighter because I tend to like to use things like sandpaper and I'm, I can be kind of heavy handed, you know, um, and because a lot of times I'm working in cold wax medium and oils. I tend to just always, almost always work on, on cradle wooden panels and they're heavier than canvas. So in this case, and I think probably in a previous video at some point, I had shown my walls and these walls are plywood. They're probably three quarter inch thick. They're not just drywall. Uh, and that's really an important thing to point out because I could never hang these panels the way I'm hanging them and subject them to some of the some of these methods where I, you know, pretty pretty heavy handed with them with like the sandpaper or an orbital sander. So it's kind of important that you have a really nice wall to uh, screw into it actually. So I've got screws in the walls that are at a certain height. Let's say it's at, I don't know, 60 inches. I might have a, a couple different levels of screws and they have to come up from the wall about I'd, probably a good inch because the cradle of these panels is I think it's two inches, so it needs to have enough to hang on to, right? So with an inch sticking out, that's pretty good. But that means you've got about a, I don't know, about a two inch screw. And you have to have a plywood wall for that to really be secure. If it's drywall, you know, if you hit the stud, you're fine. But if, if you're not hitting the stud, you should be really careful that with that because, it, you know, your screws may come out. And I've had that happen. That's why I'm telling you this because it's happened to me. So that's when I decided to, uh, actually have plywood walls made in this rented studio um, and now I'm going back to uh, putting some tape you saw the tape hang, um, hanging beside the panel and I didn't throw it away and I did find a use for it again I'm just kind of making a mask with that tape and then uh, painting over it and then you'll see me pull the tape off there's a rectangle pretty hard-edged rectangle to kind of it's you know thicker than the stripes but it's a nice uh, juxtaposition against the curvilinear in this painting. And uh, so, yeah, thank you, Maureen, for that question. Um, I, I encourage you to have like a nice 
wood wall that you could screw into, nice hefty screws you want to have, and um, make sure that you use a level, make sure that they're all kind of coming out perpendicular to the wall. These are all things that kind of matter because if you hang your panels and, and you didn't use, say, a level to make sure that they're all at 90 degrees, then your panel's not going to quite hang straight. So um, just little things. And then um, I have a question here from Dawn, and she asks, um, Hi Pam, how do you mount your paperwork on board or canvas? And again, I do mount mostly on board. And that's again, because most of my paintings, um, I'm working with acrylic or sometimes cold wax medium and oil. And if it's cold wax medium and oil, then it really does have to be on a rigid surface. So that's why I would mount them on board. And I would just encourage you to look through all my videos because I have a demonstration on video of how I mount works on paper onto panel. So I hope that's helpful to you. And I wanted to thank all of you for, um, or, or those of you who've had a chance to watch my free webinar, thank you for watching it and thanks for your comments. And a few of you had a couple questions about the webinar and one person said they couldn't find the link. The webinar is how to create powerful personal paintings you love in three stages without fear, procrastination, or getting stuck. And it's a pretty long webinar, it's, it's over an hour, so if you happen to want to watch it, the link is in the comment section, it's also listed in the description below this video. And uh, I appreciate your feedback, if you want to give me any, I'd like to know how I can make it better, but it's just information that pertains to everything you're seeing in my YouTube videos, and I wanted to share that with everyone, so um, if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, then again, the link's going to be below this video in the comment section. and. And also another person said um, that they, they're they interested in like my online course, but they, they don't work in cold wax medium and oils. And I just want to let you all know that it's, it's not, I do the demos in cold wax medium and oil, but the course itself is all about making powerful design and personal color. And that pertains to any medium, any 2D medium, I would say. And I have a lot of artists who work in acrylic you know, some work in collage, some in pastel, some in watercolor, uh, you name it, any 2D medium, um, because the principles of color design are universal and they're not dependent on medium. So I had to choose some medium to do my demos in. The demos happen to be in cold wax medium and oils, but you certainly do not have to work in cold wax and oil to take the course. So I just wanted to put that out there. So now I'm doing some close-ups here. You can see, uh, the um, effect of the sandpaper on the paper, on the paint. It's really kind of just randomly uh, affected that surface, which I love. It, it looks aged, it looks kind of worn. So anyways, thanks everyone. I, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoy sharing this material with you. Um, I appreciate your likes and your comments, of course. And please subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss the next video, which may just be the last one. <laughs> Thanks everyone, bye now.